So Microsoft just released an early preview of Warzone 22 H2. What's new between the current stable version and this preview build? Well, let's take a look. So firstly, the watermark of the entire preview build has now been gone, which makes the desktop look much more cleaner, although Microsoft did document that it might return in the future builds. Next up, the boring Robert dialogue has now been replaced by this really Windows 11-ish looking one, <laughs> instead of the Windows 8 one. And then we got two more features called Do Not Disturb and Focus. So with Do Not Disturb, you can sell your notification banners easier than ever before. And you can even set rules like on which exact time or scenario Do Not Disturb should be turned on. Also, you can set priority notifications to control whether or not calls, reminders, and specific apps can break through when Do Not Disturb is turned on. And Focus on the other hand lets you minimize the distractions on your PC by saving the notifications and that flash animation whenever you receive a notification from an app. And it even integrates with the Focus feature on the Clock app. And not only that, the Clock app also supports direct integration with Spotify. So while the Focus session is going on, you can chill out by listening to some calm music on Spotify. And the Focus feature can be found in the Notification Center. Now you can also create folders in the pinned app on the Start menu and also name those folders. Kind of a great touch if you want to keep the pinned app setting on the start menu minimal. Previously, the only way you can access the snap layout is by hovering over the maximize button on a window or long pressing the maximize button on a window if you are on a touchscreen tablet device. But now you just need to drag the window to the top of your screen in order to access the snap layout. Next up, we have got live captions. For live captions, closed captions are automatically generated with any content on device. How about Windows 11? There's a lot of new and great features and annoyances. So that is and these captions can be displayed either on the top or the bottom of the screen or in the floating window. And they can also be resized. To activate the live captions, you just need to press the Windows Control plus L keys on your keyboard. And the caption appearance can be personalized by modifying the caption style instead of caption settings. The Windows Explorer though is getting a lot of improvements to be honest. Firstly, the quick access panel is now called Home. And now there are three menus. In the quick access menu, all your pinned folders should be visible. In the favorites menu, all your pinned files should be listed below it. Speaking of which, yes, what is the one now lets you pin files too, instead of only allowing files to be pinned like on previous builds. And the recents menu, all your recently opened files should be listed below it. <coughs> and it's also synced with OneDrive. And speaking of OneDrive, while browsing your OneDrive folders, you can also see your stink status. Wait. Stink status? And speaking of OneDrive, while browsing your OneDrive folders, you can now see your sync status and quota usage without having to leave File Explorer. And another new feature that all the Windows users appreciate, including me in this build, is the previous of items within folders. And we also got fine new touch gestures in this build. But unfortunately, I can't showcase this to you guys because I don't have a tablet device. And Microsoft has also become more strict with its power consumption settings. Now the sleep and screen off timers are set to 15 minutes instead of 20 like before. And power saving recommendations are also provided when you set the screen off and sleep timer never. And the task manager is also improved. So Microsoft has updated the design, la design language of the task manager to match with the new design language of Windows 11. So this includes a new hamburger menu and a new settings page. And it even syncs with your device theme and changes the theme accordingly. And then there's another feature called efficiency mode. So this feature is helpful when you notice an app consuming really high resources and like the limit is consumption so that the system gives priority to other apps which will lead to for faster foreground performance and better energy efficiency. You can enable efficiency mode by right clicking on the progress that you want to enable efficiency mode on and clicking on efficiency mode. If the option is grayed out, it most likely means that there is a core windows process and throttling it might affect the performance of the computer. And Microsoft has also partnered up with Clipchamp for the stupid online video editor. So, people would say it's a really, really great and new and uh, modern alternative to Windows Movie Maker, but I would say that Windows Movie Maker was far better compared to this piece of food. <laughs> so, Clipchamp is a web app, so it's unreliable. Bruh. It requires a Microsoft account and asks for a, personal, a lot of personal details too. And it's also really hard to get used to. And there's even an edited Clipchamp button on the context menu when we right click a media file. But if you click on it, nothing happens. It just opens up Clipchamp and it doesn't even import the file into Clipchamp. Anyways, let's talk about the next change that's built. So there's a weather forecast on the left side of the taskbar, and when you hover over it or click it, it just opens up the widget panel. And the main change here is just that it now has the family safety widget, which I mostly consider useless. So I'm just gonna skip it. If you right click the start button, the command prompt window shortcuts have now been replaced with this really with this Windows terminal one. Which I think is a really great move made by Microsoft, because I love Windows Terminal and its user interface. And instead of the start menu, if you have and instead of the start menu, if you click on all apps, the transition animation has has been changed. In the power menu, you have a new option called sign-in options. 
but if you click it, click on it, nothing happens. This is pretty expected as it is a preview build and it could be really buggy. The search though has gone through a complete redesign. Firstly, we have the suggested app list on the left side and some bugs of Bing stuff on the right side. It also contains a date and day on the top along with your profile and the three dot icon from which you can submit feedback, change your indexing options, and customize your search settings. LOL! So you can also drag and drop stuff to the Jasper now. Thank you Microsoft! And on PCs with more than one color profile, you are able, able to add a quick setting toggle to switch between these modes much more quickly. When you are casting from your PC to a wireless display, a cast icon will appear on the right side of your taskbar, and clicking on that cast icon will open up the cast quick settings, where you can quickly stop casting whenever you need to. And now the charging indicator has been updated to a lightning bolt symbol instead of a power cable. And when windows are grouped in a layout, it's now visible as a whole group in the Alt tab menu. With this build of Windows 11, rotating your device between portrait and landscape orientation is snappier and much more responsive. And the emojis are now updated to look more natural. And finally, we got to make a blur effect on some title bar surfaces. But I mean, yeah, it's just not that noticeable though. Even though these features and changes might seem really cool, this is a double over build. Meaning that any changes that took place here might not make it to the final and stable build. So you want to consider that too. So alright guys, that's all for today's video, so hope you enjoyed it, and if you're wondering what's the Inside Preview Build's version number, it is 22616.100. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like, and guess again getting subscribed to my channel with notifications to all, so you'll never miss out on anything a piece of content that I upload. And also if you have any queries or any ideas for future upcoming videos, please leave a comment down below. To be honest, it would be really helpful for you. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Goodbye! Thank <laughs> you.